out, freak out, freak out. Megawatt vs. the Vampires of the Sun is here. It's 48 pages of full-color glossy action for kids between the ages of 8 and 80. And just like the Macho Man's career, it can only get bigger and better with your support. Yeah, this campaign starts at 48 pages, but Megawatt vs. the Vampires of the Sun gets larger with more great fans like you backing this right. It takes you to make this comic book's page count grow until it's unstoppable. All the way to 80 pages of glow-in-the-dark vampiric insanity. Yeah, Hulk Hogan, did you hear that? And don't forget, there are surprises around every corner of this campaign, like trading cards, magnets, posters, and more. And for those of you who help make Megawatt vs. the Vampires of the Sun a raging success by sharing this campaign with your friends, there are even more special treats waiting for you when the campaign closes. I'm talking about ultra-rare blank sketch covers for free and a whole lot more. And don't you worry, Mom and Dad. This is a spooky book safe for kids, but with a story that'll keep you guessing what happens next, too. It's Megawatt versus the Vampires of the Sun, book one, awaiting your approval on Indiegogo. Snap into that website. Oh, yeah. Dig it. Hello, all you beautiful people in Webtown. We have a super sexy segment here today on Crypto Comics. We're talking about Angela. If you are not familiar with Angela, this is a stunning female character. She's an angel, in fact, created by Neil Gaiman and Todd McFarlane. And we will, we will talk about uh, the legal battle over this character after we go through the comic book. Needless to say, Angela started in the pages of Image Comics, Spawn, issue number nine, in fact. And this is a three-issue miniseries that quickly followed her debut because this character was white hot in the 1990s. Every kid I knew wanted to get their hands on Angela's first appearance and this Angela miniseries. This miniseries, actually, it's, this is out of print. The trade paperback's out of print uh, because I'm guessing because of the legal disputes over the character. And like I said, we'll get into all of that after we're done looking at this totally, totally stunning piece of art. The story is by Neil Gaiman, and the art is by longtime Image Comics contributor Greg Capullo, Todd McFarlane's right-hand man. The word angel is the name of a function, not of a nature, for they are always spirits, but are called angels when they are sent, St. Isidore, and the entomologies. So we start on a nice planet. Angela is on this nice planet. Today is my 100,000th birthday. I decided to celebrate on Sandalfon 5, a nasty little ice ball in a nowhere neighborhood of space-time. There's almost nothing on the surface of Sandalfon 5 but rocks and ice. Under the ice, there's water. Fish live in the water. There are things like penguiny raccoons that eat the fish if the fish don't eat them first. And things a bit like overgrown polar bears that eat the raccoons and really big fish who eat the polar bears. And at the top of the food chain, there are the Sandalfon dragons, and they eat whatever the hell they want to. This is because they're the biggest, meanest, fastest, nastiest predators you can find anywhere. Anywhere outside of the hell zones, anyway. There are less than 50 of the Sandalfon dragons left. Getting the hunting permit cost me more favors than I'd care to admit. Not to mention my entire work hour surplus for the last two years. Still, it's my birthday. I'm spoiling myself. Orthodox hunting theory suggests a very specific, very careful course of action if you're hunting a Sandalfon dragon. Orthodox hunting theory doesn't specifically warn against climbing up the side of the mouth of its cave. It does, however, caution against attracting the animal's attention while it's still in its lair. It calls such behavior dangerous, stupid, and suicidal. Hey, ugly! You want to come out and wish me happy birthday? Here it comes. Here I go. So she, you know, takes on this uh, big, big monster, huge sandalfon dragon. And you can see that this art is absolutely stunning completely engaging, incredibly dynamic, exactly what you would expect from Image Comics in the 1990s. I don't know if that still rings true today. I don't think so. Unless, of course, you're still reading Spawn. 
So she stabs this, this big guy in the eye to take him down, hit that brain. And then what's she going to do? She's going to cut off its head. Happy birthday to me, Butch. You're going to look just great on my wall. Attention, Angel Angela. Throw down your weapons. Drop that head. Make no sudden moves. What the heck is going on here? Boom, two-page spread. That's what. Angela, you're under arrest. I'm what? You heard me, traitor. Suriel? That's right. Don't even think about running, Angela. I will do you the courtesy of assuming you would not be stupid enough to consider fighting. As you can see, I have an entire host of angels here. We're authorized to lance you into oblivion if you resist arrest. Something, I must admit, that I could do with no discernible qualms, and possibly even a teensy modicum of pleasure. Now, we're taking you back to Elysium to stand trial. Are you going to come quietly? Hmm. A host. That's 333,000 warriors and guards, plus drones. All armed, all with weapons pointed at me. The dragon sliced my shoulder up pretty badly. My ribbons are still in a state of shock. I'm exhausted. 333,000 to 1. I've had worse odds. No, I haven't. Oh, hell. An entire host just to arrest one little hunter? I'm flattered. Well, what are you waiting for? I'm ready. Poof! And they disappear. 333,000 of them. You'd think just one of them would have wished me happy birthday. For a moment, we become one with the pulse and the flux, and then we're there, here, in Elysium, the place of angels, the city of glass and eternal light. Aren't you even going to tell me what I'm accused of? A number of things. High treason, for one. Treason? You're crazy, and you're a traitor. I've been decorated a dozen times in the battle against the forces of Malbolgia. A score of active combat medals. I've personally destroyed over 30 Hellspawn. No one has ever questioned my integrity before. No one who wanted to keep their vital organs intact and inside them. Save it for your trial, Angela. You'll get plenty of opportunity to speak then. What a, what a gorgeous face. He just draws the most gorgeous women. You know, I, I say like Greg Capullo, Michael Turner, and J. Scott Campbell, my top three favorite artists when it comes to drawing women. J. Scott Campbell, however, draws men really great too. You know, this is shaping up to be a really rotten birthday. Tell me who your three favorite artists are who draw women. And then, you know, which one of them do you think draws men the best? Tell me in the comments below. So here we have Spawn back in New York, and like this whole thing, he's just pining over Wanda. It's just like, oh my gosh, guy. Get a grip, dude, it's over. Angela's under arrest? What is this, a joke? This has to be some kind of weird mistake. Like I'm going to joke about something like that? It's no mistake, Quan Yin. You can stop tidying. There isn't going to be a surprise party. It was broadcast over the web about 20 minutes ago. Oh, the web. Look at that, man. Neil Gaiman, very forward thinking. Remember, this was the, this was the early 90s still. The web was a thing, kind of. You know, if you had CompuServe, the web was a thing. This might even have been before AOL, when you'd have to buy, you know, hours of time on the internet. You know, oh, I only got 12 hours left on my AOL Gold account. I got to be careful. It was broadcast over the web about 20 minutes ago. She's been taken to the House of Penitence and is about to be formally accused by the Dominion. What are the charges? There's a whole string of them. High treason, larceny, criminal negligence. Oh, and get this, hunting without a permit. But she wouldn't do that. It's got to be a mistake. Or she's being set up. Huh? Anahita? What are you saying? Well, think about it. Like you said, she wouldn't do that. You and I both know that. She just wouldn't. It's against everything she stands for, against everything she is. But if the Dominion says she's guilty, then they must at least have evidence. There's no way Angela would even dream about hunting without a permit. But if the Dominion says 
Maybe the Dominion is lying, Quan Yin. You think about that? Come on, who'd want to hurt Angela? That's just what I plan to find out. Here we have some other angels who are clearly hunters, man. Look at these ladies. They're rock rocking it. So this is in the prison. You should feel flattered, Angela. We haven't needed to use the maximum security cells since we captured the prebendary Melkadale. The prebendary Melkadale. Oh, okay. Is that like prebendus? I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. You won't be needing these any longer. You come back here with my trophies. You have no right to take them. I killed those damned hell spawn myself. I earned them. Really? My guess is that when the trial's over. They'll have proved that you never killed a single spawn. Maybe you were working for the Malbolgia the whole time. Isn't that so, traitor? But I'll tell you what. If they find you not guilty, I'll hand them back to you personally. Clunk. Oh, you'll do more than that. All we're asking for is that you'll check the files for us. Are you both crazy? Look, Suranyu, just show us the files. I can't do that. It's evidence. It's restricted information. The whole file's classified eyes only. Neither of you have the security clearance to... Yeah? You remember a hunting trip we were on two, maybe three years ago? You know the one I mean, where you got stupid and careless, and a Capellan Volpagor nearly chewed your face off? Well, sure, but this is my job we're talking about here. Angela saved your idiot life, and you won't lift a finger to help her? You make me sick. Anahita, put her down. Okay, I'll, I'll help you for Angela. But if anyone ever finds out, they won't find out from us, sister. Angel's on her. Yeah, I take a little liberties with the, with the foxy angel. This is Gabrielle, director of Terran Affairs, reporting formally to the Metatron via the First Dominion. Metatron's the voice of God. This report is being copied to archives and is level C sensitive. I received the Dominion's queries on my initial report concerning the missing dimensional lance. To clarify, no, Angela did not report to my office on her last visit to Earth. She did not present me with a hunting permit. Indeed, I have no record of any hunting permit being issued for the Earth at any time in the last dozen years. Isn't she that one Angela had a run-in with back when she was Undersecretary of Administrative Affairs? Uh-huh. She's lying. Angela wouldn't have gone to the planet without checking in with the embassy first. She wouldn't. Angela then engaged in an unauthorized melee with this individual. In life, he was known as Al Simmons. He's the newest and the rawest of the Malbolgia's hellspawn. Angela was roundly beaten by the hellspawn. She fled, leaving the dimensional lance behind. Extensive searches for the lance have, to date, been fruitless. Al Simmons. Got it. Saranyu, punch up his current location. And sure enough, you know, he's, oh, I'm pining over Wanda, my love, oh my gosh. Terry impregnated you while I was dead and rotting away in hell. But now I'm back. And I want to love you, I want to touch you, I want to embrace you, I want to make little half hell spawn babies with you, Wanda. Cry, baby. Huh? What the hell? Of course, you know, the magic of the angels is appearing all around him. And boom, he gets kicked in the face. Oof. Al Simmons, hey, big boy, we're going to take you to heaven. To be continued. What? How many pages is this comic? I mean, you do get this awesome pinup. You know, that's really cool, right? Very sexy, very stunning. This is by Sean Parsons and Brad Gorby. But let's just let's just count it off, you know. I like to count the pages to see, you know, what we got here. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two. Okay, it's just this art is so stunning that uh, I felt like it was shorter. This book is feels bigger than the average image book. Oh, the first official Todd Toys photo gallery from the fall of 19, 
94. So most people today know it as McFarlane Toys. But in the beginning, it was called Todd Toys. And then Mattel was like, hey, Todd is one of Barbie's friends. We are going to sue your pants off and take everything you have, Todd. And Todd was just like, okay, McFarlane Toys. And hence, you know, then you get McFarlane Toys. So here you see all these Asian women in Todd's sweatshop doing his bidding, building all of these little tiny spawn toys for people, medieval spawn toys, a spawn alley for all your action figures to play in. Ooh, Angela action figure. There she is from Todd Toys. That's, that's a good looking action figure. And it's amazing because Todd, you know, revolutionized the action figure industry. And uh, this is like, this is where it all started. Neil Gaiman, Angel's Visitations. We'll talk about Neil Gaiman here in just a second. See what, oh, I, I don't even remember Image Trading Cards. Image Universe Founders Series. Top's finest. One's good, one's bad, but they're both awesome. Well, that's true. Spawn number 27, the introduction of something. Oh, and there you see some more of the toys, right? You have the Spawn, you have the Violator, you have the Medieval Spawn, just very popular back then. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is Angela number one. And uh, this, this little character here, she has had quite the legal battle over her ownership. So how did it all start? In 1993, Todd McFarlane contacted Neil Gaiman, as well as three other uh, established authors, Alan Moore, Dave Sim, and Frank Miller, to each write an issue of Spawn. Gaiman, of course, wrote Spawn number nine, which featured the debut of this character, Angela. All three of the characters were co-created and designed by Todd himself. And the Spawn series continued to feature all of these characters after Gaiman's issue was over. Some characters had tie-ins with the toy company, as we saw. And, uh, of course, Cogliostro, who was a, a wizard character. He had a, a pretty prominent role in the crappy live-action movie from 97. So Gaiman claims that McFarlane had initially agreed to allow him to retain creator rights to the characters, but later on, McFarlane claimed that Gaiman's work had been work for hire, and that he himself owned all of the co-creations entirely, specifically pointing out the legal indicia of Spawn number 9. This is the indicia right here, where it talks about the copyright, first printing, who owns everything. And the lack of a legal contract between himself and Gaiman that would state, you know, that Gaiman did own rights to the characters. And I think where McFarlane really rubbed Neil the wrong way is when he refused to pay him for the volumes of work that McFarlane republished and kept in print. So you flash forward nine years to 2002, and Neil Gaiman files a lawsuit against Todd McFarlane and Image Comics for the rights due to any co-creator. And he wins! He actually won a pretty sizable judgment. So a judge ruled at that point that Angela, Cogliostro, and Medieval Spawn, who Gaiman also co-created, would be owned equally by both men. In 2012, another decade later, they settled their dispute, and Gaiman was given full ownership of Angela. The following year, in 2013, Neo Gaiman returned to work for Marvel Comics and sold the character outright to Marvel, at which point she was retconned to become Thor's lost sister, which I think is stupid. But hey, what can you do, right? And so this awesome angelic character who was one of the, you know, the original impactful characters in the Spawn series is now uh, relegated to, you know, second tier status, third tier status at Marvel Comics. Like many characters that Marvel buys, it kind of reminds me of, uh, of all the characters in the Ultraverse. You know, we talked about how they bought Malibu comics so they could get a hold of their color studio and then basically shuttered all these characters. Now, Angela has been treated with a, a little more respect than all the Malibu Ultraverse characters. She has actually been featured in, a, you know, Marvel's animated Guardians of the Galaxy series, and elements of her were used for Hela in Thor Ragnarok. And she does appear as a character in a few Marvel video games as well, like Guardians of the Galaxy, The Universal Weapon, uh, The Avengers Alliance game on Facebook, Marvel Contest of Champions, uh, Marvel Heroes, and others. Unfortunately, though, this is, uh, this is Angela's fate, you know? She, she belongs in the Image universe, but she'll never be there again. Nonetheless, that should not deter you 
from going out and picking up this Angela 3 issue miniseries if you liked this review. Because the writing and the art are totally solid. They're, you know, they're everything I want in a comic book. And uh, I would assume that any discerning reader wants the same. And if you are looking for a good story and dynamic art, please don't hesitate to check out my comic. That's right, Crypto Comics has his own comic. It's actually available on Indiegogo right now. All you have to do is go to megawattcomic.com. That's megawattcomic.com. And it'll take you right there, and you can see all the amazing stuff we have waiting in store for you. As always, I appreciate you beautiful people in Webtown watching. I implore you to click that thumbs up button. I implore you to click that ding dong for notifications. And I will see you again tomorrow, right here on what? Crypto Comics? That's right.